Hey guys, in this video I want to show how we can loop the wave modifier. We will also make this repo setup, creating the swan shape, and we will cover some lighting, shading and rendering techniques to make this whole animation. So let's jump into it. We can start by adding a plane. If we press S, 1 and 0, we will scale it 10 times. Now we have a 20 meters long and wide. Don't forget to apply the scale. This is important for the wave modifier and not only. We can press tab for edit mode, subdivide the plane, and let's increase the number of the cuts to 100. We can go straight away to the modifier tab and add the wave modifier. And like you see, we already have this little wave at the center waiting for us. And if we play the animation, we can see the magic of the wave modifier. Shade smooth, and let's cover some of the settings. First thing first, we can enable the motion only on Y, or only on X axis. We can also disable cyclic. Or when we have it enabled, like by default, this is repeating the wave constantly. The next important thing is the height, which is pretty much self explained We can also add negative values. The width is very important if you want to loop the animation. And this is the distance between the waves, or how far they will be from each other. We also have narrowness, and here we can say we want our waves to be skinny, or we want them fat. Let's enable motion on both axes, and we can see that the settings work perfectly fine. The other thing we can cover is starting position. self explain it again, from here we can choose a starting point of the waves. We can choose any place on the plane, or even outside the plane. The other important thing is the time. Here we will use the offset and the speed. From here we can speed up or slow down the waves. Let's also check what the offset is doing. If we go to the first frame, we can see that the waves just started, and if we play the animation, they will expand, right? But why the offset is important? If we change the number to 50, we can see they will start from frame 50. We can also set negative values. And if we add minus 100, for example, they will start from here. And on frame 1, we already have all these ripples waiting for us. Let me just change the frames to 120. And the question is how we can loop the wave modifier? To have a loop, we need the animation to be the same at the beginning and at the end having two exactly the same frames at the start and at the end. However, if we include these two frames in our animation, there will be a short delay or pause between the loops. So we just have to skip one of these frames when we play or render the animation. If we have frame 0 to be exactly the same as the last frame, when we play and render from the first frame, we will skip frame 0 and create seamlessly looping animation. To loop the wave modifier, we have to mind four things. We need to decide how long will be our animation, add negative values to the offset, then we can just play with the speed and the width, finding the synchron between them so the frame 0 is the same as the last one. I can't explain how exactly it's working, but using this technique you can loop whatever you want with the wave modifier. There is actually a cool 
blog post written by Antonio Roberts, in which he shows how with a little bit of math we can loop this modifier seamlessly. Still, it's important to find the right spot. And by this I mean that we can just add some random values and expect this thing to loop. For example, let me show if we change to some random frames how this will break the loop. Just play with these four settings, find the right spot for your animation and do your thing. We can now go ahead and create something from this plane. I just want to show you how we can add a few more modifiers to make our waves a little bit more interesting. Then you can take this technique and use it for your project, whatever it is. Let's collapse the wave modifier for now, just to have more space for the next edge split modifier. Like you can see from the name, this modifier will split and duplicate the edges in our mesh breaking the links between the faces. We can see what is happening when we add the smooth modifier. This modifier will smooth our mesh without changing the number of the vertices. And in this case, we will make each of the faces smaller. We can repeat the steps to increase this effect and create something like a tech ripples. And if we want the distance to be even smaller, we can always decrease the factor. Let's now add some depth to our leg. For this, we can use Solidify Modifier. And let's go back to Shade Flat for now. We can increase the thickness to 1 meter, and now we have this. Let's also smooth out these edges. For this, we will add bevel modifier. And we have to decrease the amount. We can always add more segments. But this is not a good idea if we have a lot of geometry. Because it will slow down drastically our workflow. So for this, we can go to shading tab and enable harden normals. And now, like it says here, we need to enable auto smooth. So let's shade smooth one more time. Go to the object data properties and under normals enable auto smooth. And now only the bevel will be affected. We can go back to the modifiers tab. And if we try to run our animation now, we can see that it takes too long time for each frame. But we can disable the bevel modifier from the viewport and we can use it only during the rendering. This looks a bit boring with all the squares and sometimes that's what we're looking for, but let's add some randomness here. We can add the decimate modifier and bring it on top so it affects the plane before all other modifiers. This modifier is used to reduce the number of the faces in different ways. If we disable the other modifiers for a moment and go to the wireframe mode, we can see what exactly is doing. If we decrease the ratio of collapse, we can see how it's reduced the number of the faces, making all these nice random patterns. We can also choose unsubdivide, which will change the face orientation while reducing their number. There is also a planner, but we will cover this in another tutorial. Let's go back to collapse, set the ratio to 0.5 and enable triangulate.
we can also add more triangles to this mesh. So let's just add subdivision surface modifier. And move it on top before anything else. This modifier will split the faces into smaller ones, smoothing out everything within the mesh. And we want this just one time. Disable this one as well from viewport only to run our things faster. And let's start playing with the materials. Change to material preview. Then material properties. Click new. And increase the metallic all the way up. We can also reduce the roughness. And change the color. We can continue by adding one more plane. We can add again some thickness with solidify modifier. Increased one meter. And now we can see what is happening when we forget to apply the scale. When we apply it, the one meter size will be split correctly. We can just grab it on the axis or we can use the offset to move it. Add material, change the color, reduce the roughness a little bit, and increase the transmission all the way up, which will refract the light. And if we was using Cycles Render, this will be enough to get transparency. But we are using EV, so we need to change the blend mode to Alpha Blend. Enable some of the EV render settings as well. Ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflection, and refraction. Go back to the material, reduce more the roughness. And the alpha. You can see what it's doing, so let's set it to 0.7. Now we have this strange looking tile ripples. And to make them even more strange, we can add some texture to the wave. For this, we have to go back to the wave modifier. Let me first decrease the, the height. Move a bit the second plane. We can also rename them. This will make the workflow easier, especially if you have a lot of stuff in our scene. So going back to the wave modifier, we can go to the texture tab, click here and our waves disappeared. And if we go to the texture, this tab right here, we can see that actually there is no texture yet. So we just have to choose a type. And now it will take the colors of the texture that we choose and we we'll use the black for 0% height and the white for 100%. We have many different texture types. And when we choose one, we can play with the amount and the size to create so many cool effects.
Just go ahead and play with all these textures and see what's work best for a project. Play with the size or also the brightness and the contrast are very important. I think for this one, we will stay with the clouds. We can check how it will look when we render it with all the modifiers visible. Let's save what we have. We can also move the planes into a new collection and hide them for now. We can continue with creating the swan shape. For this, we can go to the front view and import a reference image. Here we have this option to align it to the view. If we go now to object data properties, we can enable opacity and reduce it. Then we can add a path, go to edit mode and start moving the vertices along this one. We can always add more vertices by subdivide. If you want to find out more about this technique, you can always check the DR composition tutorial where I explain a little bit more about the curves. Once we have this, we can go to Object Data Properties and under Geometry, we can increase the depth. We can fill the gaps, but this is not necessary because we will scale down these vertices. So just select in the vertices you want, press Alt S and scale down or scale up. That's all. I'm not going to follow exactly the same swan shape from our reference image, but if you want to do so, we can always go back to the object tab and change the depth to front. So now we can see the image before the object. We can increase the resolution as well. This one is for the length steps. And this one is for the depth. We can change the profile as well. Let's scale up where the head should be. The next thing is to create a beak just by adding a cone and changing the vertices to 4. And I'll speed up the video here because it's getting too long already. But just by rotating, grabbing the vertices, then extrude the top face ones so we can add the orange and the black colors. At the end, just add a little bit of bell, and that's it. We can now set the parent, let me adjust it, and select the big first, 
then the swan shape, control P and choose object. So now whatever we do with the swan, the big stays attached to the same place. We can add the materials. Metallic all the way up. Reduce the roughness. Actually, we can reduce the metallic as well. Select the beak. Add the orange. Reduce the roughness. And we can add another slot and change the color to black. Then if you select the faces you want, just have to assign the black to a selection. And that's how we can have multiple materials to one object. We created everything we need, so let's set up the scene. We can add the camera, choose a nice position and press Ctrl Alt number 0 to snap it to the view. If you go to the viewport display, we can increase the passport too, so we have a better idea of how our final render will look like. Let's switch now to the render mode. And if we go to the world properties, here we have the color and the strength of the surrounding environment. And from here we can add an HRI map. We just have to choose environment texture, then click open and select the HRI. For this scene, I will use Pont HRI, which I download from Polyhelm. They have so many cool stuff and everything there is for free, like HRIs, textures, models. So make sure you check them out and feel free to support these guys if you like what you found there. It's time to add our lights. For this, I just want to add more reports to make our life easier. We can set this one to be the front, the other one to be the top view. Add the first area light and move it on top. Go to data properties of the light, change to ellipse, and now we have an oval shape. Can increase the power. We can decrease the strength of the HRI also. Actually, let's change the shape disk. We can change the color of the light, use shift it duplicated, and just play with the positions, power, size and colors until we have something that we like. Here I want to show something, for this we can go to the shading tab, or just change the timeline to shader editor. If we change from object to world, we have our HRI. If we select it and press Ctrl T to add the mapping and the texture coordinates, for this make sure you have enable node to render add-on. 
which is great, especially if we deal with textures. It can save you a lot of time. If you want to find out more about it, there is a good tutorial in YouTube, so check it out. However, why I want to show you this is because from here we can rotate our HRI map. And in this case, where we have the reflective plane and the HRI having very dark and bright spots, this can affect a lot the final render. And we can achieve so many different results just by rotating it. Anyway, I just wanted to show this and just keep in mind what you can do with it. I'll bring it back to zero and maybe play with this later on. We can change back to timeline here. We won't need these viewports for now, so make them smaller. And let's see what's happened with the focal length of the camera. The most common are 35, 50, and 85 mil. But we can actually choose whatever I want, right? Still, make sure you Google or check in YouTube the difference between these lenses. It's good to know what you can achieve with them. Final tweaks. The cool thing is that we always come back and adjust everything we want. We have the setup, but the render don't look good enough. Let's play with the settings till we have something better. If we go to core management, we can change the look to high contrast. We can always choose very high, but better to stay with a medium high or high. Then we can play with the exposure and the camera zoom. We can add depth of field. We can choose to focus on object or just press E on focus distance and click on the beak. And this will calculate the distance to the object. Change the F top, but be careful, don't go too crazy with it. Lastly, we can see how our animation looks like in real time. But if we press play, we can see that this way too slow. So let's disable the modifiers and leave only the wave. And now we can see from here that this is in real time. And it's way too fast. But we can always go back to the time and slow it down. Let's also change to 60 frames, so we can loop this thing with minimum rendered frames. Let's see what we have, and we can render and save our animation. If we go to Output Properties, we can change the frame per second to 30. More is better, but it's not a must. Also with 60 frames, now we have exactly two seconds of animation. From here, we can choose the location where we want to be saved. And the way I like to do it is to save each frame as JPEG, especially if we render with cycles. So from here, I can say I want now to render 
from frame 1 to frame 10. Then I can come back later and say now I want to render from 11 to 20. Once we render everything, we can switch to video editing, add the image sequence and make the animation in no time. However, we can always choose for Blender to render out the whole animation for us. For this, we have to choose FFmpeg from map from here, go to encoding, change the container to MPEG4, output quality to perceptually lossless, and hitting Ctrl F12, you will have no frames but animation. That was everything. Now we know how to loop the wave modifier and not only. Thanks so much for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed and learned something from it. So do your thing and make sure you love what you're doing. I'll catch you on the next one.